welcome friends to this meditation workshop in Rice Lake. This three day event is intended to share with you my experiences in meditation. It is not the intention to say that in three days one can learn meditation. Meditation is a very long process. When we become seekers of the truth, seekers of our own true self, seekers of where we really belong, seekers of our true home, then we find meditation as one of the methods or means to achieve that goal. This is not the only method. This is the, uh, this is the basic method. It is the elementary class on the way to our true home. As I go along, I will explain to you what else exists besides meditation to take us to our true home. But as we cannot start without the basic training, therefore we use meditation. Even meditation is a long course. It, it is not three days, it's not three months, it's not three years. Very often it's three lifetimes. The different masters and mystics who have practiced meditation, they have said that meditation can take as many as three, four lifetimes. That we prepare ourselves. The meditation, the word meditation, it only means to meditate upon something. We are all meditators already. We meditate upon the things of the world. We think about the things in the world and that is why we are meditating on the things of the world. We meditate on other people and that is also meditation. Thinking about somebody is also meditating upon that person. The difference between the worldly meditation and spiritual meditation is in spiritual meditation you meditate on the spirit, on your own self and not on anything outside of yourself. Because in the spiritual path, we want to discover who we are. We want to find out why we are here. Why is human life created? What is the meaning of life that they say? And we have to find an answer to these questions. These questions arise naturally in us if we are seekers of the ultimate truth. If we are seekers, of the true home to which we belong, these questions come automatically. If I have to go back to my home, why did I leave it? Why am I here? Why are so many of us here? Why are so different from each other? All these questions come up during the life of a seeker. And as one tries to find answers to them, it's also considered meditation. When we meditate on the answers that we are getting to our questions, we meditate with our think thinking process. We have got a very useful device installed in our heads called our mind. Our mind is a thinking machine. It thinks all the time. It's a very efficient, useful machine because it never stops. It keeps on thinking so long as we have life in this human body. So that is why we have an efficient machine that is thinking within us and we use it to meditate upon the world as well as meditate upon questions that we have in our head. When we think about these questions, we try to find answers through the mind. The mind has a little problem in finding true answers and the problem is it can only think in terms of time and space and can only think in terms of cause and effect. These three things, time, space and cause and effect, are essential features of the mind. Mind works and all thoughts work within this framework. It is not possible to think of something outside of these three parameters of the mind. And that is why if we have to think of something that is without cause, mind is incapable of doing it. If you have to think of something that is not in time, the mind is not capable of doing it. If you want to think of something that is not in the space, mind cannot think of it. That is why 
the mind has big limitations in trying to understand some of the true reality which may lie beyond time and space and beyond causation. So that is why the mind is not the right tool to discover our own self or to discover our true home. But we try to use the mind and think the mind can find all the answers. So when the mind tries to find answer to thinking, we get very confused because the mind cannot find the explanation for contradictions that appear in our life. The contradictions appear because we make great effort one day to do something and does it work. Next day, by accident, it works. What happened to the mind? Something did not work with our own effort, the maximum effort. And something else happened and it worked. So we now the mind cannot explain that at all. The mind cannot explain how something that has no obvious cause has happened. That is why the mind is very restricted in discovering things that lie beyond the scope of the mind. And I want to make it clear that time and space, like everything else, are also creations. They are part of creation. We are not talking of creation when we want to find our true home. We are talking of the power, this area, the whatever it is that created these time and space and the other creations. So to go beyond time space, we cannot use the mind. But we are so used to using the mind, not, to, not for a little while. We have been using the mind for our life, for our survival, for doing everything in this life for several lifetimes, maybe millions of lifetimes. We have created minds which are so programmed to always say, we can find by thinking, by reasoning, by rationality. We can find answers to all the questions. That is not true. That is why we get stuck. And that is why we get confused and we don't proceed any further. When we are seekers, we keep on seeking and then we find the futility of using the mind to find the true answers then we look for something else and that is when we get guided by something that has been created for us called a human being who is different from us and we call him a perfect living master. How is that human being different from us? A human being is just like us, made of the same elements, made with the same body, same sense perceptions, same mind and same soul, like ourselves, then how do we call him different from us is because of his awareness that what he is aware of is beyond the mind and also what is in the mind. This is awareness, our awareness right now is restricted to what we behold with the mind and we have some awareness hidden inside. We don't use that awareness too much. It does come up sometimes but not too much. When we try to make an effort to find something, when we try to do something, it is always the mind that comes forward, not any other part of our talents that we have inside our head. What are the other talents? The other talents are those that belong to our own self without the mind. Our own self is sometimes been described as the soul or spirit. The spiritual path deals with the soul or spirit. It does not deal with the mind. In fact, it tells us that if you want to find your own soul or spirit, you have to go beyond the mind. So that is why the mind becomes an obstacle in a way, and that which we have programmed for so long and are constantly using it, instead of being helpful, becomes an obstacle. So that is why we have to find means that are beyond the mind. We do experience some of those functions of our own soul right here. The biggest function, the most striking function of the soul, of the spirit, in this physical world and all worlds, including beyond the mind, is called love. We write it L-O-V-E. Love is a function that does not take place in time and space. It does not take place 
by the law of cause and effect. It just happens. When we experience love for anybody, we know it comes suddenly, spontaneously, and does not follow any particular law of cause and effect. When the mind tries to analyze how did this happen, it tries to put even love into cause and effect and very often converts it, converts love into what the mind can understand, which is another word called attachment. Attachments are called love by the mind. Love is called love by the soul. So there is a big difference in the definition that the soul applies to mind and the mind applies to this word. Soul applies to love and the mind applies to love. Basic difference is when you have love that is experienced by the soul, you experience a beloved, the one you love. You don't experience yourself, you experience the beloved, that is love. When you have attachment, you experience yourself first and that to which you are attached later. You always have experience of two. You will notice when a person is saying, I love you, I love you, again and again, first of all, what's the need for repetition so much if you really love somebody? Sometimes when you fall in love, you can't utter a word. You can't say anything. But when you keep on saying this, what are you really saying? I love you. I come first and then you come and we think that is love. These are attachments. We are using the word love for attachment all the time. I'm just telling you the distinction. We all have the capacity to love. We all have experience of love. And yet by mind, the use of the mind, we convert it into attachments. So that is why the function of the soul, which is love, is converted into a function of the mind, which is attachment. Similarly, the another function of the soul, and we call it intuition. Intuitive knowledge, intuitive awareness. Intuitive awareness occurs suddenly, spontaneously, without time. And most often, we notice it without cause. We don't know where it comes from, how it comes. It's a spiritual experience. When intuitive awareness comes to us, we sometimes call it a gut feeling. Just an just inner feeling that we just feel like it, but we can't answer how we are feeling. There's no reason behind it. There's no mental gimmick around an intuition. Intuition is also the same as love and a function of the soul. But when we intuitively feel something, the mind reasons us out of it. Just like the mind converts love into attachment, the mind converts intuitive awareness into a reasoning process. And let us reason why you thought like that. And the mind very often, as you must have noticed in your own lives, rejects the intuitive awareness in favor of what it can make sense of, what it can reason out. So that is why we have these functions going on. We have a function, we look at something beautiful, the sense of beauty comes instantaneously, without time. It can come with no knowledge of space. And yet, when we try to analyze beauty, it becomes something that is an attachment or function of the mind, an appreciation of the mind. It's an analysis of the mind. Some people have used these words analysis and synthesis to distinguish between the mind and the soul functioning that the mind always functions through analysis, tries to break down, tries to see things separate in order to understand them. And it thinks the understanding is the highest goal. To understand something is the highest thing we can do. That's what the mind believes. And therefore, when it experiences a thing is beautiful, I look at this flower. How much time did it take me to appreciate the beauty of the flowers? Actually, no time. It was instantaneous. Now I say, what is making it beautiful? Oh, these different colors, and I look at it. That original experience of beauty has disappeared. And an analytical analysis is going on. What is making it beautiful? It's not the same thing. So that is why the mind seems to sometimes overwrite our spiritual experiences. 
we are basically spiritual people we are souls we are not minds mind has been given to us to use mind is a great accessory mind is a super computer and like we use computers we use the mind but when we start identifying ourselves in the mind we make a very big mistake so that is why when we do spiritual seeking for our own self the role of the mind is very limited but it is essential because we are trained we are programmed we are indoctrinated over lifetimes and lifetimes that everything has to be found through the mind and through thinking so that is why the meditation process becomes long if this were not the situation meditation is a one moment step but because of this feature that is built into us that we have been built with these three things around us as part of our human experience the mind is an essential part of a human experience sense perceptions are an essential part of human experience a physical form is an essential part of human experience these three are attached to our self our soul and the soul which is consciousness life only life can give us an experience if we are not living we don't get any experience we can have a full body with all these three intact so that is why life which is consciousness is soul so soul creates life for the mind soul creates life for the sense perceptions soul creates life for our body for the physical body and that is why we function in this world with these three attachments which we can use very effectively and we are supposed to use all these three as effectively as we can to enjoy to enjoy an experience which has been created by putting these attachments on of ourselves these little accessories upon our soul they are supposed to work together so to make life a great experience that is why we came here that is the whole purpose of life that we have got these experiences because of these attachments these accessories that have been added on to us without that we have experience is not the same experience supposing you had no mind no senses no body supposing you were merely souls you still would have experience of infinite intuitive knowledge you would still have experience of unlimited love you still have experience of unlimited beauty all these three combined are called the ultimate bliss that you can enjoy they're still there you can reach a state where you can have ultimate bliss and these functions are going on they don't belong to the mind or the senses or the body but in order to enhance these very things and to create a much greater variety of experiences we have been given these extra things the mind the sense perceptions and the body and since we are wearing them around ourselves the soul wears these around itself therefore we sometimes call them our three bodies that we are wearing the physical body is the outside body that we can all see and work and move around in this physical world do our things with the physical body this is the outermost garment of the bodies they are wearing one of the three bodies the inner body consists of sense perceptions the power of seeing touching tasting smelling does not belong to this physical body at all if it only belonged to the physical body we could not imagine anything we could not see anything in imagination we could not fly in imagination we could not have any dream we could not have any inner experiences where we see that we can do all these things and use our sense perceptions sense perceptions are separate from the physical body and since we are only used to thinking of a body around us we call the sense perceptions also a body and we term it an astral body the astral body consists of nothing but the soul the mind and sense perceptions the only thing missing is physical matter the rest is the same it does not mean that there is a separate body that somewhere existing it is just our own sense perceptions when separated from the physical matter become the astral body the astral body means we are the same that's functioning now we are using the same sense perceptions covered by the physical body we are using the same mind same sense perceptions covered by physical body but 
if we did not have a physical body, which we will not have when we die in physical form, the inner self will still be there. The inner self is not dependent on the physical body. Similarly, the sense perception that constitute our inner self are also a body. And if we take that body off, we have the mind and the soul. That is our self. The mind is also like a body because it surrounds the soul. The soul is within the mind and the mind operates by thoughts creating time and space around it. And therefore the soul sits giving life to the mind. And when we have only mind and soul, we call it the causal body. Because all things experiences we are having here are caused there. And if you have an experience of the causal body, you will get answers to questions such as, how was the world created? Why is the world created? How is destiny made? Why are we all having different destinies? What is karma? All these are created at the causal plane with the mind and the soul. It's just a question of these functions being divided at different levels. So when we have the mind as a causal body and we don't have the causal body even, we discover who we are. First time we can say who we are, the self, who we are as a self. Till then we do not know who we are. We are calling our coverings, we are calling our garments which we are wearing as our self. This misidentification of the self with the body is causing the biggest problem for us. If we did not misidentify, just remember, if we knew at all times that we are just like I'm wearing a jacket, I should remember, I'm wearing a body and I'm wearing sense perception, and I'm wearing a mind. I will always be conscious that they, these are covering is upon myself and not really myself. So that is why we can discover ourselves only when we can lose the awareness of these three bodies. Right now, we are constantly aware of these coverings and therefore we do not know who we are. And we are saying, know thyself. Socrates said, know thyself, find yourself. And people wonder, we know ourselves, what, what to know? We know our name, we know who we are, we know where we live. No, the body's name is that. The body lives there, not you. Therefore, to discover the self, we have to find a means by which we can experience ourselves without these three bodies. The purpose of meditation is to help us in that. The purpose of meditation is to help us in discovering our own self. And if you understand how these three bodies are covering the self, it is easy to understand meditation. Meditation is to temporarily lose the awareness of these bodies. Temporarily. That means we don't have to die to find the inner body. What they call dying while living. We can be living, sitting in this physical body and by losing awareness of these, we can discover what is inside. That should be simple. It is a simple process. The process is, if you can lose awareness of your physical body and keep awareness of everything else, you will know exactly what the astral body is and, what, and who you are as an astral body. If you can lose the awareness of the astral body, you will know what the causal body is. If you lose awareness of causal body, you will know who you are. The simple process. And then the method that meditation uses is a method to lose awareness of the cover outside. That's all. Nothing else. Meditation is designed so that we can use a method, a technology, which will help us to become unaware of the outer self and know more of the inner self. That's it. Now, how can that be done? We have been given the great gifts. All of us have those gifts, those means by which we can do it. What are the means? If we have to become unaware of the outer body to find the inner body, what are the means given to us for that? There are two great means we are all gifted with. The first is the power to put attention where we like. Our awareness, <clears throat> awareness is a general thing. We are all aware there is a hall we are sitting in. 
but your attention can be focused on one thing or the other. You're putting attention on me to listen to me. I can put my attention on flowers and appreciate them. I can put attention on anybody else. Attention can be managed, manipulated by our will. And wherever we like to put our attention, we can put our attention there. Therefore, we have great means of using attention. And we can put our attention wherever we like. We use it every day. We want to read a book. We put our attention on the book. We want to see, see somebody. We put attention on that person. We want to, in, a, in our mind, make a plan that tomorrow we want to go and visit that place. We put our attention with our mind on that place without even seeing it. Attention can be used physically and in imagination and in thought in every way. Attention is a great power. Where you place your attention is a very great power. And that is a great gift given to us in order to discover our own self. The power of putting our attention where we like. Then the matter becomes simple. We have all our life put our attention on subjects and objects outside. Let us put our attention inside. Inside ourselves. Inside where? I'll tell you that. But the object of meditation is to put your attention inside on yourself, not outside. So long as we can do that, we have a successful meditation. So how do we put the attention inside? The same way we put attention somewhere else. I want to put my attention right now in Italy at the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It comes into my imagination. And I am thinking of that. I put my thought. I am imagining that, I put my sense perception, visualization. I am putting my sense perceptions and my thoughts on something I want to put attention on. It is not even here, it is somewhere else. Here we are talking of putting attention on something that is the closest to us, not so far away. The closest point to us, nothing can be closer than us, is our own self. Nothing can be closer to our own self. Not the body, our self. From where we are doing these things, like I am talking, thinking, feeling, appreciating. All these functions I am doing are from the self. So we have to just find out if the self is functioning inside, which doesn't take time to know. It's not functioning from any air or some place outside. It's functioning from within the body. Then the next step is which part of the body is it functioning from? So when we carefully examine that where are we thinking from, where are we making plans from, where are we using our mind from, where are we actually sitting inside the body, very quickly we come to know it's not the hands and the feet, not our legs or arms, it's not the, even the torso of the body, it's the head. That narrows down the field into a very small area of the head, the small head on a big body, and we can now find which is the spot inside. Now that step is even easier. We want to examine what point inside we have to put our attention on. We close our eyes and can contemplate and think. Think to ourselves, where could I be operating? Am I on the right side or left side or in forward or backwards? It will take you five minutes to find out you are on either side, you are at the center. You are the center of the head. It doesn't take long. It's how you feel. It's not some, some uh, anatomy to be studied. It is where do you feel? Where do you think from in the head? Is it in the front or in the back or on the sides? You'll find no, it's in the center. That is exactly where in the wakeful state in a human body we are functioning from as the soul. It is so clear that we know exactly the point where the self is. And therefore, we also know that we have to put attention on the self. That is good meditation. If we can do that, we are good meditators on the self. We'll discover ourselves. So, how do we put attention there? We use the second gift to us, the power of imagination. We can imagine we are there. That's not difficult. 
we can imagine we are sitting somewhere else. We can also imagine we are sitting in the head. We can imagine we are sitting on top of this building. We can imagine we are sitting anywhere. We can also imagine we are sitting inside the head. If we can imagine that we are sitting inside our head, pure imagination, then we are doing things inside our head. I make it simple during these meditation exercises to say, let us sit inside the head like we sit outside. We are sitting on chairs. Okay, make it an imaginary chair. Very simple. Where? Where you are thinking from, where you are making this decision from, in the center of the head. It's only pure imagination that we can use to create objects that we were seeing outside as imaginary objects inside. We still imagine we are like we are here. That good enough? We imagine that we have the same body we have here. If we can imagine that we are sitting there, the same body, the whole of us, the whole of us, the body, the thinking machine, the power to see, touch, taste, smell, all of us have now gone and in our imagination sat inside our head in the center. And it's an imaginative experience. But what is actually happening by doing it? You are drawing your attention to the center of your head. The very secret of good meditation. To draw your attention to the secret of the head. So that is why it's so important to know that if you don't do this first step of imagining that you're sitting in the center of the head, imagining you're sitting where you actually are, operating in the wakeful state in a physical body, the rest of the meditation will be useless if this step is not done. If you are sitting somewhere else, what will happen? Thoughts will be somewhere else. You will never have no idea about where you are. You have no idea where you are sitting. This is something that has to be done in a wakeful state. Because we lose awareness of our body every night when we go to sleep. If the only purpose of meditation was to lose awareness of the body, we are doing it every night when we go to sleep. We lose the awareness of our body and we think we are dreaming somewhere else. That is not the purpose. The purpose of meditation is to be unaware of the body and be continuously aware of where you are if you are unaware of the body, which is in the center of the head. As it happens, the center of the head is between the eyes and behind the center of the forehead. Since it's between the eyes and you can still see with your imagination, it has been called the third eye center. The third eye center means nothing more than the center where the self is operating while you are in a wakeful state. That's it. Therefore, Meditation is a very simple exercise. We have made it very difficult for ourselves by trying to meditate through thoughts without sitting there, which happens that we are scattered, scattering our thoughts and going all over the world in our thoughts and we cannot meditate and make any useful meditation. Just sitting with your eyes closed and thinking of the rest of the world is not meditation, no matter how long you sit. Meditation is only successful if you can place yourself behind the eyes. First, my master, great master, told me I should not start any practice of repeating words, Simran, Mantra, anything. Listening to sounds, ignore everything till you are well seated there at the third eye center. And these things should be only done when you are well seated, third eye center. Doesn't matter if it takes years to practice this. Because if you don't do it, you are wasting your time. What happens if you are repeating words without sitting there? Your mind is roaming around, remembering things, thinking of everything in the world. You are repeating the words with your tongue. Sometimes you are repeating the words even inwardly in your mind. A second part of the mind is roaming all around the world. What are you getting? That is not meditation. That is not spiritual meditation. 
that is still meditation on the world. It's not what we are here for. We are here for discovering our own self. So that is why during these couple of days that we are here, I am going to share with you every step that will be necessary to achieve the ultimate state where you discover your own self and your true home. It does not mean that you will get it in two days. It needs practice. Why does it need practice? Because we have programmed our minds otherwise. Otherwise, we would not need any practice. Otherwise, our own natural self, our natural consciousness could put itself to that place. But the mind scatters us. Why is that? Because the mind was created for that purpose. The mind was created to give us experience of time, space, and cause and effect in a created world. Maybe it was not, nothing wrong with it. It is the design to have an experience away from the limited experience of our own self and have an experience of other things at other levels of consciousness, other types of experiences. And there are very beautiful range of experiences possible. Look at the range of beauty and colors that we can find in this world. If you walk through this world, walk through nature, there's so much to admire, so much to wonder how it's created. That is why every level, if you go to the astral plane, without physical matter, you can see both matter and non-matter at the same time more beautiful than this. It's un the beauty that you can appreciate through creation is unlimited. That's why we are here. We are not here for any other purpose. We are here just to admire and see the beauty of how creation can create these wonderful experiences for the self. Now, we did not do what we were intending to do. We were supposed to be here admiring, enjoying the beauty of the creation. But what are we thinking? Just because we wanted to make this experience absolutely real. And to make it real, we had to cut off our awareness of our own self and think this is the only reality. That's how we make it real. Just for that reason, we say, oh, it's a terrible place here. We have got bad karma here. We are suffering here. We are having painful experiences here. Yes, they are there. Painful experiences are created. Negative experiences have been created by us in order to enhance the appreciation of the positive experiences. This principle on which this creation took place was the principle of duality, the principle of pairs of opposites. To create an experience, the opposite was created at the same time. It doesn't matter if it's a matter or anti-matter or it's pain and pleasure. Everything created here is in pairs of opposites. And when you have an opposite, you enhance the experience of the positive. In fact, if there is no opposite, you may not, never have the experience of the positive at all. So that is why it's a designed thing. It's a designed thing that you should have the opposites, ups and downs. It's a roller coaster ride. People love to go to a park and have a roller coaster, but not the roller coaster of life. It's the same thing. Enjoy it. Ups and downs of life. It's a design like that. But if somehow you are tired of it, if you had enough of it, there's a way to go back home. And the way to go back home is to find out where the home is while you're still here, while you're still in this physical body. Discover who you are. Discover where the true home is. And you will find the easiest thing to do if you discover it now. Then you leave the body. You can go straight there. If you want to have some little time on the way, you can enjoy the journey back. It's a great ride back. Just there's a great ride here, there's a great, greater ride back to your true home. So all I'm sharing with you is that the process of meditation, to be spiritual meditation, is merely to place your attention in the head behind the eyes and the third eye center. If you can do that, you have done more than half the success of meditation. People think that we have to meditate by repeating words, the mantras and all. That's very slow thing, very small thing compared to discovering where you are operating from because the self is right there. If you can sit behind, you can discover where you are right now. 
Shall we begin? Are you all ready for meditation? Yeah. Please raise your hand if you're all ready for meditation. Okay, we start from the basic. In order not to miss the location, I'll suggest a simple way. Take this, this body of yours is not you. Don't forget that. This body of yours is not you. You are inside the body. Therefore, to make it easier for you not to identify, every day you are calling this body yourself. And a switch may take time. So therefore, to make the switch easy, let us say, think of the body as a house you are living in. It's a house. The torso is the main house. These are just arms and legs or attachments. Ignore them. And over the torso, there are six floors based on the six energy centers. And you have in the sixth floor behind the earth. Think of the sixth floor right below you and think of the staircase that is there to go down or an elevator that existed at the back in the spine. Make a good picture of this house of yours. If you make a good picture of the house, then you can also feel more easily that you are on the sixth floor sitting in the center of this beautiful room here. During this exercise, which we'll be doing, never go to the lower centers until I tell you just for a visit. Otherwise, to get the knowledge of the self in the wakeful state, we stay behind the eyes, not lower. If you close your eyes and feel that you are in this house, see if you can feel you are in the center of the sixth floor. Explore if necessary. If your attention goes up and down, take it up and down, but keep it within the body. At this time, forget what is happening anywhere else in the world. Only confine yourself to the physical body in which you are sitting now. No other thoughts. Only where you are in the sixth floor. Only within the head. All thought is about where you are. Think only about where you are. No other thought. Back to the center of the head, not outside, anywhere. Think of only what's happening inside the head, not outside. Only what you can see within. Try to stay in the center. Don't move too much to the side. Center of the head. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. 
five, open your eyes, welcome back. How many of you could imagine that the body is a house? How many of you could imagine that you are sitting on the sixth floor of this house? How many of you imagined it for a little while and then you slipped out? <laughs> How many of you saw faces appear in front of you when you were sitting in the cell? How many of you felt you could not recognize those faces? Pretty good for first attempt. Maybe many of you made this attempt earlier. This is uh, the real issue that we are not practicing enough of sitting at the center of our house. Imagining the house is an aid to it and it helps. If you don't imagine, then the mind scatters even more easily. The faces that come in front and go, which you saw, are also your attachments, your attractions, and they come from outside. Some faces you don't recognize, many of you raise your hand, are coming from your faces of past life attachments and experiences. During this process of meditation, very often you will get visions and experiences of what happened in past lives because your inner self does not distinguish between this life and past life. This body distinguishes. When you're sitting in the body, then you distinguish. This is my life. I only had this life. This is the only life. But when you're inside, other lives will look like there's a continuity. The reason for that is that the very imagination you used is a function of the astral self and not of the physical body. And that Esther itself has lived it much longer. It's average is 1,000 to 3,000 years of physical time. So that is why you have had previous bodies and previous experiences which may come during meditation. So don't be surprised by that. This happens very often. So now we do this again. This time use another thing and that is called concentration of attention. I mentioned attention. Now we do what is called concentration of attention. Concentration of attention means when you figure out where you are and what you're seeing, try to stay there by concentrating your attention on that. Concentration of attention narrows the area in which your attention operates. And concentration is an actual mental effort that you make. It's a actually you can decide to concentrate attention on something by ignoring other things, including what is happening in front, ignoring, excluding everything else. That is called concentration of attention. Supposing I take a piece of paper, and I say, I want to concentrate my attention on this paper. I look at it, I look at it with greater concentration. The more I will look at concentrate, I will not know who else is sitting there. This is the power of concentration of attention. So that is why now when you put attention that you are in the center, concentrate your attention on being there by ignoring what, is, what else is there. Ignoring any images coming in front. Don't watch them. Don't watch anything. Concentrate on being where am I? Even that imaginary self of yours sitting in the center on the chair or on the floor or whatever you have made up the mind. Concentrate on being there where you are, narrow down to the center of the end. So this will help you a lot. So let's see if we can practice that now along with the first part. Go back, close your eyes, consider your body to be a house in which you live. You are on the sixth floor of the house and comfortably seated on the sixth floor in the center. And you are now going to concentrate your attention on where you are sitting, on your chair, on yourself, and not anything else.
concentrate on just yourself and where you are sitting. Just see what's around you, not think of anything else. Not even look around, just be looking at what, where you are. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Welcome back. How many of you felt it was better this time? Good, good improvement. How many of you felt there was plenty of room in the sixth floor where you were sitting? There was plenty of light there. How many of you saw more light than you normally see with your eyes closed? How many of you like that place where you sat? Can we make it a little better by decorating it? Like you will decorate your own house. If you decorate the place, the place good, best curtains you can think of. For the side, for the windows, if you have any windows in that room, whichever your imagination has created that chamber in which you are sitting, nice rug, carpet, nice, whatever your idea is of making something beautiful and attractive. Shall we try that? If you like, it will become an easier way to get back again and again. But this will be our meditation chamber. That will be the place where we will do all meditation from this point onwards. Not anywhere outside. Not on our chairs outside, not on the floor, not anywhere, not any corner of a house. Not finding any particular room we have set up in our house for meditation. Only in this place. Therefore, decorate it as best you like. Some people like um, incense. That should be incense should be there in that room. Some people like Whatever you will be doing, which, you, which is attractive for you to go and do your worship, your meditation, your puja, anything you want to do should be done there now to make it successful. So that is why let's decorate it. So now let's spend a few minutes decorating our chamber of the third eye center or meditation chamber. Can we call it meditation chamber now because we will only do everything now. From this point onwards in the meditation chamber, nothing outside. We are leaving outside because I had enough of it. Now we want to find out something inside. So please, once again, close your eyes and put your imagination and your sense of aesthetics to make it as attractive as possible. And make it a permanent place where you come every, every time you meditate, you come to that place. Make it so beautiful. Put everything that you need there. Any furniture you require, put around you there. And keep your seat for meditation always in the center of this chamber, center of this room. Decorate it now, please. Decorate with the best things you can think of. There is no cost involved today. No dollars to spend, no money to spend. Just imaginary, imaginary money. Make it beautiful. You always like to come back here and make a nice central place where you sit and meditate. Center of your chamber. Don't forget, it's on the sixth floor of your house, no mirrors. The decoration is only sixth floor of your house. <coughs> 
after decorating admire sit in the center and admire what you have done look around your house and admire but only within the house within this chamber look at everything you have placed in the chamber and how beautiful it looks if you're not in the right place make a change make it as good as you can make it very attractive keep your eyes closed till i count 5 1 2 3 4 open your eyes welcome back how many of you think your chamber looks beautiful and you are attracted and you like to go there again and again from now onwards i will call our meditation chamber only that chamber you just made no other place every time we meditate now onwards will be there only in the center if you can stick to that it will be quick progress if you move away from that it will be slow very simple thing the whole secret is to hold your attention at the center of your third eye center which is right at where you are sitting in the chamber so that is why instead of confusing ourselves third eye to two eye whatever it's our meditation chamber our meditation chair our meditation uh, uh, mat rug whatever we have is right in the center and we enjoy sitting there but everything we need for meditation for enjoying for admiring in a nice chamber that we made is right there so that is or always going to be now the meditation place for us to be now since we have decorated so well how many of you had experience that when you were sitting there you were still thinking of things outside how many of you still were thinking of outside things even while you were sitting inside your chamber okay we have find find a solution for that how many of you have been initiated into a mantra or a simran that you repeat holy words so so many of you already have a device what is the purpose of repeating mantra the purpose of repeating mantra is to make the mind constantly think of those words and so it won't think about other things that's the whole purpose it's a mechanical purpose we some there repeat mantra is magical words and all may, may be magical but the primary purpose of simran mantra to repeat is to keep the mind occupied in the repetition of words which we are directing the mind to do and not the mind on its own is doing other thoughts have been coming on their own by the mind other thoughts of other things um, other memories other Uh, plans other things are coming automatically this is being directed by us when we repeat the words chosen by us or given to us by a master we are repeating words in order to squeeze out the other words of thought and that is why they should be repeated 
with full attention of the mind on those words. If you just repeat the words sitting there and the mind still keeps on thinking, they don't serve any purpose. Therefore, it's important to repeat the words with your mind with full attention on the words and full attention on the words is gained by listening to them carefully. That means it's not merely repetition. Far more important than repetition is listening to what you are repeating. There is no better way to concentrate your attention on the words than by trying to listen to every word carefully. So that is why we make it one, we take advantage of these words of Simran Mantra and so on, so that we can repeat them to listen to them and hold attention on them so mind will not think of other things too much. Which is a which is a distraction for us in our meditation. When the mind starts going back into worldly things, we are trying to find something inside. So those of you who have a mantra, we will now have a session where you will use that mantra at the third eye center in the middle of your chamber where you designed it so beautifully. Sit comfortably and close your eyes, not these eyes. Close your eyes inside where you are sitting and then repeat the mantra. You, these eyes can be closed very easily but right now you are having open eyes inside. Trying to decorate it, trying to see where you are, trying to see where, you, where your chair is, where your place is. Now close your inner eyes, repeat the words of your mantra or Simran slowly. Slowly because if you repeat fast you won't listen to them. Repeat slowly each word so that you can listen to it and do a good job of listening to words not moving away from the center of your meditation chamber. If you can do this successfully, you will have made a big step forward. Close your eyes and begin. <coughs> Repeat slowly and listen attentively. If attention slips away, make the repetition louder, slower and louder. Concentrate attention on the words you are repeating. Listen to them attentively. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Welcome back. How many of you think you got successfully done this session by repeating the word and listening to them? How many of you still, in spite of repeating and listening, your mind was still thinking of other things outside? See, now we know what the problem is. That is the problem. 
That is where we need practice. That is where we need time. The mind is so used to spending all available time 24-7 on outside things. We are trying to pull it inside and it won't leave its habit. But the secret still is to use repetition of words and also concentrate attention on this, listening to the words. I want to explain to you that these sense perceptions are created at the astral plane and we wear them after we have worn a mind and then we wear the sense perceptions or the astral self. These sense perceptions then operate outside. But there are two perceptions that continue even before these five are created. Seeing, touching, tasting, smelling. And these five which are being experienced by us to see the world, they are experiencing this world with these five sense perceptions. They disappear above the astral stage, but two still remain. One is seeing and other is listening. So listening and seeing stay, even repeating goes. So when we listen to the words we are repeating, we are using an even higher sense of ours. So listening is very important it will go beyond even these two levels of physical and astral consciousness. And that is why listening is very important. And when I will come to tell you better use of listening, in the course of this workshop, I tell you how we use listening more importantly than anything else. We'll come to that. You can start practicing that listening attentively with concentration right on the words we repeat. The other image is seeing. In our own old scriptures, they call them Nirat and Surat. Nirat is the power to see. Surat is the power to hear, listen. So these two are higher than the other five senses and they stay in the causal plane also. So that is why using these two, seeing and hearing. That is why they say this path is called the path of light and sound, seeing and hearing. Light and sound. Light and sound comes from the fact that this the light and sound will be experienced as seeing and hearing even above the astral plane, even above sense perceptions. So it's a good idea to know that and to practice listening as early as we can. And the earliest time for listening within yourself is listening to the words you are yourself repeating. That will help you further in listening to other sounds later on. So it's important. Let's. Uh, do it once again. Use also Nirat this time. I was saying close your inner eyes. That means I was saying concentrating on listening. Now, how many of you have been initiated by your master? How many of you remember clearly the face of your master? Okay. How many of you do not have a master? How many of you who do not have a master have somebody you love? Okay. Now, in this exercise I am going to make you do next is where we will use both Nirat and Surat. We will use both seeing and listening but within the third eye center, within the chamber. And that is those who have a master will invite the master to come and sit with them in this chamber. And he will remember the face of the master. While they are repeating the words and listening, they will also see the master most likely repeating the words with them, with, with you. With you, master will repeat words. That's a very good experience to have the master visible to you. At the same time, you are repeating and listening. Master is also repeating, making it easier for you to listen to the words. So, those who have a master, 
imagine that master is there with you sitting in front if you are sitting in a chair master will sit in a chair in front if you are sitting on the ground master will sit on the ground in front of you so imagine master sitting in front of you and repeating the words the same way you were repeating so don't close your eyes look at the master and repeat the words and if master joins you good if he doesn't just watch but concentrate while doing this on listening to the words you are repeating and the vision is of the master sitting in front so this this combines what we call simran and dhyan that is a repetition of words and contemplation of the face of the master there are three things that we will be using in our meditation for successful results they have been good for me i have used them i am not going to share anything with you that has not worked with me that is why i am basing everything i share with you on experiences i have gained from this master the picture you see baba savan singh these are all his teachings they worked therefore i am sharing with you so therefore the three thing that we use are to locate ourselves first of course then we use repetition of words to control the mind which is called simran or mantra then we use the dhyan that means contemplating the face of the master then we use listening to the sound these three things are sometimes done separately one after the other sometimes done in combination sometimes done in alteration how are they done it all depends on how concentrated our attention is there how much if the mind is running out we are not concentrated that's the only definition that you have concentrated attention at the third eye center will mean that you are really enjoying your being at in the cha- meditation chamber no other thoughts are coming you are listening to the words you are repeating or any sounds that will come later and so you are ha- having a vision of the master dhyan can be done independently can be done with simran can be done with listening to the sounds so that is why these are three things we will be using so right now i want you to have an exercise with me of going back sitting in the sixth floor of your house of meditation in the meditation chamber the center invite your master in those who don't have master invite your beloved and come sit next to you in front and repeat with your utmost attention and see if the beloved also repeats with you close your eyes and begin only listen to the simran and mantra no thoughts no other thought
Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Welcome back. You will notice that after every session of meditation, I rub my eyes and I rub my hands, rub my legs because this, uh, when we do deep meditation for long periods, this helps in getting back to body awareness very quickly. So that is just a means of using the uh, rubbing of the hands of eyes to get back to quick body awareness. Now, how many of you enjoyed the session with your beloved and your masters? You will notice that when you have the master with you, the concentration will be better. And I'm happy you noticed that. How many of you were still thinking of other things even when the master or the beloved was in front of you and you were repeating words with concentration, your mind was still going on other things. That is where we need practice. That is why they say you need practice, more practice, more practice because of this reason that the mind has so much programming already done to think of other things. It generates an experience and then experiences it. We think it's only experiencing what is there. It generates experiences and then experiences it. And this is an old, old uh, activity of the mind, which we are carrying the same mind. I said this physical body has a very short life compared to the astral. This is only 100 years, a little more or less. And the inner body is at 2,000 years, more or less, 1,000, 3,000. The mind's life is in millions of years of physical time. Which means we are carrying the same mind in all reincarnations for millions of years. Very often we carry the same mind till the next dissolution of the whole creation. Till the paralaya comes, the dissolution comes. So, the karma is carried only on the mind. Soul has no karma ever. Soul merely provides life. The karma can only exist in time and space and on the mind. And that is why the karma generated and stored in the mind. And since we have the same mind, the same karma keeps on repeating itself even after 100 lives. So that is why the mind is a very long thing. It's our mind, same mind that's thinking in you now. That mind has such a long life. So, the mind for all this time has been just using it to go up, not go in. Even when it thought it was doing something by way of God realization, it was still putting attention on outside things. We had to create outside symbols for worship of one who sits inside. We are worshipping some power, creative power that sits inside us next to the soul and we are looking outside at man-made buildings, man-made statues and images, man-made places, man-made things and putting attention outside to discover what is inside. That is why for so long we have had the mind practice this so it takes now time and practice to get back to inside. There is no other problem. It's only because we are used to doing that. So practice means do more activities inside. You can do more activities. This was just a couple of activities I mentioned to you. We can do many more activities inside. And I'll take a break now. But when I come back, have a nice light lunch. So you can meditate a little more in the afternoon. And we will go and do many other activities. How many of you like to fly in the sky? We'll do that in the afternoon today. That is one of the inner activities. We won't fly with this body, but we will fly with the inner body. And we'll see what we can see when we fly. 
Okay, thank you very much for this first session. I look forward to seeing you three o'clock again.